In this video, we're going to finish up our talk on microcytic anemias. The microcytic anemias we talked about were things like iron deficiency, we talked about lead, we talked about sideroblastic anemia, correct? The last two that we're going to add on the list are anemia of chronic disease and thalassemias. I'll start with anemia of chronic disease first. Anemia of chronic disease is very similar to iron deficiency. In fact, anemia of chronic disease is kind of like I like to think of it as pseudo iron deficiency. Anytime you have chronic disease or chronic infection, your body will take iron from the blood and store it as ferritin. And that's why we call it pseudo iron deficiency. You have a lot of iron, you just can't reach it. Why does it do that? Well, long ago, the, the theory is in chronic bacterial infections, our body developed a, or evolved the mechanism to store iron and keep it away from bacteria. Bacteria need iron. And so it stored it and kept it away from bacteria. Unfortunately, it kept it away from ourselves. But I guess the theory was it was better than not to die from bacterial infections. Here's the problem. Your body doesn't know the difference between a chronic bacterial infection and just chronic inflammation from like autoimmune conditions or cancer. So any type of chronic inflammation or chronic disease sequesters iron and so it stores it and we can't reach it and that's why it causes pseudo iron deficiency and microcytic anemia how it does that well when you have chronic inflammation you release cytokines like interleukin-6 interleukin-6 increases acute phase proteins one of those being hepcidin hepcidin we talked about in our previous video uh, blocks absorption of iron also also blocks cells from releasing iron so you sequester iron now let's see how the labs look We'll start by looking at the labs of iron deficiency first and then comparing and contrasting that with anemia of chronic disease. So, iron deficiency. How does the serum iron look? Well, you're low in iron in iron deficiency, so serum iron is going to be decreased. How's your ferritin look? Again, you don't have iron, so your iron stores, your ferritin is going to be decreased. How's your TIBC look? By definition, ferritin's down, TIBC will be increased. And then just icing on the cake, uh, how's your free erythrocyte protoporphyrin look. Protoporphyrin, recall, is the last step of heme where iron binds to it. If you don't have iron, then you just have a ton of protoporphyrin building up, trying to wait for iron. It's not getting iron, so it just builds up and builds up, so FEP is actually increased. So that's iron deficiency. Now let's compare and contrast that with anemia of chronic disease. In anemia of chronic disease, you pick up all the iron from your blood and you store it as ferritin. So your serum iron is going to be decreased. Your ferritin, however, is going to be sky high. You have a ton of stores. And by definition, if ferritin is high, TIBC is decreased. How about your FEP? Without iron to bind your protoporphyrin, protoporphyrin just builds, so FEP is increased. But the main thing you should know is a difference here between ferritin and TIBC. That's why I call it pseudo iron deficiency. You have a ton of iron, you just can't get to it. And the last thing I want to a note, anything that deals with iron, so iron deficiency or anemia or chronic disease, <clears throat> starts off normal -cytic. So I'll say starts normal -cytic. And then only in the later course does it become microcytic. Know that well is a common trick question most people associate with microcytic. And then they'll talk about, a, a, in the questions then they'll talk about a patient who has some sort of acute presentation and ask what type of anemia they have. They start normal -cytic. Common trick question. So know that is start normal -cytic. That is anemia of chronic disease. Let's move on to thalassemia. Thalassemia is a problem in producing globin. We talked about how blood is made out of hemoglobin. Heme and globin. And we talked in depth about heme. Now let's talk in depth about globin. So let's draw your hemoglobin. It's made up of four globin chains and then heme with iron in the center. Correct? In adults, what is our predominant hemoglobin? It'd be HbA1. And what globin chains make up HbA1? That'd be two alpha and two beta. Alpha, alpha, beta, beta. And that makes up about 97% of our blood, our hemoglobin. What makes up the other 3%? Well, we said there's a normal variant of HbA1. Do you recall what that is? 
WHBA2. What makes up HBA2? If you said 2 alpha, 2 delta, you'd be absolutely right. And that makes up about 2%. And then our last 1% is just the remnants of our fetal hemoglobin. What makes up fetal hemoglobin? If you said 2 alpha, 2 gamma, right again. That makes up the last 1%. How can we tell uh, what percentages make up our blood? Well, we can separate the globin chains through electrophoresis. So they all have different characteristics. So we can separate our, I guess, our, our globin chains and see just how many globins are there for alpha, how many globins there are for beta, delta, gamma. And by separating them, we can visualize that. So I say we can separate by electrophoresis. And that's how we found out we had 97% HbA1. So that's just some background information. Thalassemias, recall, is a problem in making globins. And as adults, we have mainly two alpha, two betas. And so we can subcategorize thal as alpha, thal, problem in making alpha globin, or beta thal, problem in making the beta globin. But before I get into that, I just want you to know a general rule and principle. If you have a problem making one of the types of globins, the other globin will increase and try and compensate for that. So if you have a problem making alpha, then beta, delta, gamma will try and increase and compensate for that. If you have a problem making beta, then alpha, delta, gamma will increase. That's just a rule of thumb. I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Let's talk about alpha thal. Alpha thal and alpha globin is incredibly important. Alpha globin, I mean, makes up everything, right? It's like the backbone of all your globin chains. And so it's so important we have four alleles that control it. Four different alleles on chromosome 16 that control it. And the degree of alpha thalassemia depends on how many of those alleles are deleted. If you delete one, we just call that a silent carrier. So I'll say one deletion, silent. It's not even a problem. You have three more to take its place. So if you delete one, not a problem at all. How about two deletions? Now we're getting tricky. Two deletions, it gets a little bit worse. So you have mild anemia. I'll just write mild, mild microcytic anemia. Now there's a couple of ways you can delete two alleles. You can delete two alleles on one chromosome. So we call that a cis deletion. All right, two on one. And they notice that cis deletions are more, com more common in Southeast Asian populations. So, all right, Southeast Asians. And another way you can delete two alleles, you can delete one allele on each chromosome. We call this a trans deletion. Trans deletion. And this is seen more in the African population, in particular, West Africa. Which one's worse? It'd be cis deletion. So if you have a cis deletion, there's a chance you give one chromosome without any alleles on there. But a trans deletion, no matter what, you'll give a chromosome with at least one allele. So cis is a little worse, but in general, two deletions just means a little milder anemia. What are the lab findings? Labs, and that's no problems with iron. It's not due to iron. There's nothing to do with iron. Alpha thal is not associated with iron. In fact, none of the thals have to do anything with iron. So if someone comes in with microcytic anemia and their iron studies are normal, you can rule this right off the bat. These right off the bat. They don't have sideroblasts, so sideroblastic anemia is ruled right off the bat. Um, problems with lead or any history of lead or any basophilic sibling, you roll that out, and then all you have is thal. And then all you have to do is tell different thals apart. And you tell the different thals apart through electrophoresis. In this trait, there's nothing wrong with the electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is normal, why is that? It's a decreased alpha production. So that's seen in all of these. So all of these are decreased in proportion. And so electrophoresis will show the same percentages. Yeah, just a little bit less. So electrophoresis will be normal. 
That is two deletions. What happens if you delete more than two? What happens if you delete three? <clears throat> that is a severe decrease in alpha production. And when you have a severe decrease in alpha production, then all the other ones, all the other chains will start to increase. So three deletions, things will start to decrease. And in adults, the main alternative chain is gonna be beta. And beta chains are gonna skyrocket. So much so that they start to combine together and tetramerize, tetramerize, become four betas or hemoglobin H. So here it be all beta chains. As your bone marrow starts to make these hemoglobin H's, this tetramer is soluble, so, so it's not a problem during production. You can actually make these just fine and they'll start to mature just fine. So I'll write down mature, fine, bone marrow is also fine. But over time, these, these tetramers of, of beta chains will start to precipitate out. And they'll start to precipitate out as Heinz bodies. Heinz bodies, these little aggregates of beta tetramers. And your spleen will see this and try and pick it out. It's kind of like those dog treats with the food inside, of, inside like a container and the dog will try and get to it. Your spleen sees this and tries to get to the Heinz body and, try and, pick, and tries to pick it out. And that causes hemolytic anemia. Hemolytic anemia, as it destroys your red blood cells basically, and causes hemolytic anemia and microcytic anemia. Now will this electrophoresis be normal? No, you're gonna see hemoglobin H. What happens if you have four deletions? Four deletions is incredibly severe. You don't have alpha chains right off the bat, right when you're a fetus. And when you're a fetus, what's the predominant hemoglobin? It'd be hemoglobin F. So two alpha, two gamma. And without alpha, gamma will start to rise. So gammas, Will start to rise. That's just a general principle. Anytime you have to decrease something, the other one will try and compensate. And when gamma rises, it tetramerizes. So you have hemoglobin BARTs. And hemoglobin BARTs is just four, four gammas. Four gammas is incompatible with life. The baby will die in utero, unfortunately. It'll have severe anemia. It'll call, we call it uh, high drops. So it's just fetal demise. And that is due to four deletions of the gene. That is alpha thalassemia. Now let's talk about beta thal. Beta thal has to do with production of your beta chains. And beta thal is seen more in the Mediterranean population and the African population. There's a theory that it can protect against malaria. That's why it's seen in those populations. Beta thal. It's seen here, correct? An HbA1. It's a little less more. It's a little less important than alpha thal. So beta thal only has two alleles that govern it, and it's found on chromosome 11. So two alleles instead of the four for alpha. And again, and again, the degree of beta thal depends on how many alleles are deleted. If you delete one, we call that beta thalassemia trait or beta thal trait. And so there's a slight decrease in beta production. Uh, what's the general principle, general rule of thumb? If there's a slight decrease in beta production, what will happen? Alpha will increase, delta will increase, gamma will increase to take its place. So you're gonna have a decrease in this because you don't have beta, but you're gonna have increase in everything else because those, those don't need beta. So on electrophoresis, electrophoresis, you're going to see decrease HbA1 because you don't have any beta chains. And you're going to see increase in everything else to try and compensate. So HbA2 increase HbF. But it's quite slight, um, very mild anemic, anemia. Not only will you see changes in your electrophoresis, but if you do um, bloods, you're going to see something called a target cell, which looks like a target. And the reason it looks like a target is because without Without beta chains, then alpha chains will aggregate and, and the aggregation of the alpha globin makes it darker in the center and looks kind of like a target. So I write target cells. That is 
one deletion of beta fat. What happens if you have another deletion? What, have, what happens if you have two deletions? And two deletions, we have beta fat major. This is the absolute, you're, you have no beta production basically. And because of that, alpha will increase and skyrocket so much so that they tetramerize. So you have four alpha globins trying to compensate, trying to work hard to make sure you get enough hemoglobin. The problem with four alpha chains is that during bone marrow production, it is insoluble. We talked about how four beta chains are soluble and you can, you can make RBCs, but after a while they'll start to precipitate. Well, in four alpha chains, you can't even make RBCs to start with. So right off the bat, it starts to destroy erythropoiesis. And so signs of beta thal major deal with your body trying to compensate as hard as it can to restore erythropoiesis. So this really severe extra medullary erythropoiesis. We talked about how your liver and your spleen can do it. So you get hepato splenomegaly. But you start to see things that you don't see otherwise. You start to see erythropoiesis in places you wouldn't see otherwise. So you start to see it in your skull. Uh, if you see an x-ray of the skull, it looks fuzzy. So I'll say skull. You start to see it in your cheeks. So kids will have this and they'll have these really big chipmunk cheeks. So chipmunk cheeks. And it puts you at risk for a certain viral infection called parvovirus B19. Parvovirus loves to infect erythrocyte precursors. And we're already down on erythropoiesis. So this is like a double whammy. And so this puts us at a chance of aplastic crisis where you're you're already hurting and then you get infected and you, your body just takes a dive because it's basically putting more demand on it and demand that you can't just keep up with. What's seen on electrophoresis? It'd be the exact same thing as this, just more severe. So you're going to have zero hemoglobin alpha because you have no beta chains and then these are going to be skyrocketing. Treatment for which um, the only care is bone marrow transplant, but if you don't want to do that, then you can do chronic blood transfusion to try and, you know, give them blood. Uh, the problem is they can face iron overload, so you might have to do iron chelators. And then lastly, you can do splenectomy if the spleen is too big or is causing too much hemolytic anemia. Those are your thalassemias. And that is your microcytic anemias. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.